couple times you mentioned learning and and this is something I love about my work and, mm -hmm. and the colleagues that I work with at We the P uh, love that every person that we interface with in every activity and every day we're learning something new it's sometimes overwhelming and, but it's very exciting and interesting mm -hmm. and it feels empowering personally mm -hmm. what have you what do you learn in a day give us some examples about you know that light bulb moment you're like wow okay I didn't know that before. Mm -hmm. And give me more recent ones, maybe, you know. How much time do we have? Well, <laughs> give me some highlights, you know, <laughs> as I, much I think, as you want. I, I think you, through your career as a police officer, you learn that people are capable of doing things you really didn't imagine. Mm -hmm. And you know, you hear about those things, mm -hmm. but then when you actually see it, it's kind of stunning example. at first. A suicide or a murder mm -hmm. or a violent crime against somebody. Mm -hmm when you actually see that for the first time it is a little bit shocking mm -hmm. i think most cops will tell you so what you read about in school and what you actually see it, it has a different impact mm -hmm. um, you learn throughout your career by experiencing some of the aha moments for me at each level as a patrol officer would be those shocking well i can't believe this person mm -hmm. actually did that or i can't believe this person actually spit on me or kicked me mm -hmm. or hit me mm -hmm. and then you evolve as i was able to do through the profession become a sergeant or a supervisor mm -hmm. then you have a different light bulb moment going wow i'm responsible for the whole shift not just my part of town so you're you're forced to look at a bigger picture mm -hmm. you have to put yourself in a position the landscape is constantly changing mm -hmm. and so you evolve through your career that way. Mm -hmm. So the aha moments get bigger and different. Mm -hmm. And probably the aha moment for me as a chief, and there's many of them, is just the, um, just the demands on the organization mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I have to be sensitive to the fact that I have a pretty high tolerance for pain and I have yeah. a lot of endurance. Yeah, you're, you're patient as but well. But I can't expect all the officers to always have my same thought process. So I want to be sensitive to where they're at. I, yep. I, don't like, I would like yeah, that. Yeah, wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, so, <laughs> really, the aha moment is understanding that there's a lot of moving parts and you have mm -hmm. to be sensitive to them all, but at the end of the day, there's certain ways, certain things and have to get done. And every day, an officer, as hard as they're working, might be coming in with their own stressors or they might encounter things that they just weren't ready for that day or yep. whatever, as, as professional as they want to be. It's interesting because I think, and I don't think you were involved in this, but you're the officer or you're the chief in my community. And some years ago, there was a house next door to me, and a cop came to our neighborhood block party, our national night out, and <laughs> made the mistake, or, or, or you would not say it was a mistake, but said, if you even have an inkling, call us. Mm -hmm. you know. And I didn't realize that that was mm -hmm. what we were supposed to do. I thought you only call the police if you know if there's like blood spurting or if there's an accident yeah. or something. Um, so a couple of weeks later, I noticed some weird activities at a neighbor's house, and so I called mm -hmm. the the Burnsville police and um, the police at first were really having a hard time as I was squaring what might be going on mm -hmm. and when I learned through that process it ended up being call after call as they just said keep calling when you see things and mm -hmm. sooner or later it'll make some sense mm -hmm. but what I learned was how it's not quite as easy either as mm -hmm. it looks and I, I went mm -hmm. with this idea it turns out it was a very large drug ring mm -hmm. in the home next door to me a, a nice well-kept mm -hmm. neighborhood um, and, and the cops had their own personal disbelief, including mm -hmm. the, the beat mm -hmm. cop was saying, nah, it couldn't be. Mm -hmm. Not that I'm distrusting you, mm -hmm. and yet. Um, so a couple things happened I were lessons for me. First of all, that the police do trust your instinct mm -hmm. at some level. Second of all, that they're strapped. So there was m some moments in time where I was like, like, who do I talk to? Do I talk to yep. drug task force? Do I talk to my beat yep. cop? Do I, mm -hmm. who? And, and there was even confusion at that particular mm -hmm. time some years ago sure. in the force. So it's a normal human organization that has its normal human issues. And then layered on top of that, there were other drug cases that were more immediate and more mm -hmm. obvious. So it's just the layers of really what you're talking about mm -hmm. is all these moving parts constantly. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the last lesson, and this was a hard one for me, was um, that there was some value of me. There was, if I had not called, nobody yes. would have called because yeah. I did talk to my neighbors. Most of my neighbors either were somewhat unaware of it. They mm -hmm. kind of said, yeah, maybe, but I don't know, you mm -hmm. know, kind of that disbelief or, d or some denial. Mm -hmm. And also um, some real fear. Mm -hmm. Numerous of them said, I no, I, I would I wouldn't make a call like that mm -hmm. because I'm afraid of, mm -hmm. and I was. It's unclear if they were afraid of of the police, you know, being angry or I don't know, or if they were afraid of the the criminals. And mm -hmm. apparently they were a pretty aggressive yep. group. 
So how complex that all was really struck me. And I'm glad you brought that up, and that's a great example because you experienced it. Mm -hmm. and that's something our organization has talked about. All the PDs would have the same message when in doubt, call us. Mm -hmm. And we've talked before, when your head and your gut aren't shaking hands on something, mm -hmm. reach out to us. But I also know it can be a little intimidating because the vast majority of people who live in Burnsville are awesome, mm -hmm. law-abiding citizens. Mm -hmm. So their brain doesn't always work like a cop, which mm -hmm. is probably a good thing. Mm -hmm. And they don't want to believe people are capable of doing bad mm -hmm. things, especially their neighbors who seem normal. Mm -hmm. But follow those instincts. Mm -hmm. We obviously only have so many officers available to work the street and this is old message but it's worth saying you know your neighborhood better than we do now this is not an old message mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll, I'll get I'm it's a frustrating one for, mm -hmm. for me as a citizen mm -hmm. and you know obviously mm -hmm. this is my work so yeah. and the reason this is my work isn't for the money mm -hmm. we were talking about mm -hmm. are you a cop for the money and, mm -hmm. and you said not really mm -hmm. yeah. um, we're, we're, I do this work because it's my way of, of being engaged in mm -hmm. my community as well and the communities and around the world but what's frustrating what was really frustrating that situation somewhat different than when you know going back to your childhood and mm -hmm. your friend you know where mm -hmm. these friends came across the street mm -hmm. is now there seems to be a lot of reluctance around doing that around mm -hmm. you know communicating with neighbors and mm -hmm. being really alert to what's going on mm -hmm. I know you've shared that your mom was very concerned about yep. what's going on across the street yep. now there's this sense that that's impolite. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to get anyone in trouble, mm -hmm. or it's none of my business, or there's a real individualism mm -hmm. sometimes, and that's very frustrating. Mm -hmm. So I think it's it's not an old saw. Um, in fact, I think it needs to re be renewed. And maybe I'm seeing it from my own frustrated view. Yep. Well, that's why I appreciate what you do, because I do think you recognize things in a different way. You're in the community, you see there's, there's a there's a need for improvement in how neighbors communicate, and it is a community. It's about people mm -hmm. working together to make a difference. Mm -hmm. That's our mission statement, people working together to make a difference through excellence in policing, and the people includes the citizens. Mm -hmm. And so really, for us to engage the citizens, that's one thing, but it's a two-way street. Right, right. And for people to call us when they're not sure about something, that that's huge, and I can give examples, and I won't name specific people because no, no, I don't no, want to no. embarrass them, but well, no. I've had relationships with people in the community for 25 years. Mm -hmm. People, when I work the street, will still call me now as a chief, and I remember, yeah, we talked about the issue. They'll see new issues, mm -hmm. and one of them was concerned they were bugging us. I said, you're never bugging us, it, but they've been calling me long enough in the police department to realize sometimes these things take time. Then we'll take mm -hmm. care of one issue, mm -hmm. and then another one will pop up. Mm -hmm. And what I appreciate about this individual is she consistently calls, and she's patient, and she understands our limitations. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the resolution isn't overnight. It may take months, or in some right. cases, years. Or some cases, it's years and years wow. of frustration. So, sure. But having that relationship in place through those phone calls, those face-to-face mm -hmm. -face contacts, mm -hmm they understand our heart, they understand mm -hmm. our motivation, mm -hmm. that we're human beings out there just like they're trying to do the best we can within the rules right, right. that we have and the policies right. and, and the and laws that, that we have to follow. So it, it's, uh, it can be frustrating for people because our society, as you well know, we like instant gratification. Mm -hmm. I did not want drug dealers next yes, to me no. at all. And uh, sometimes those issues are a deeper dive. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so if the community can understand that, yeah, we don't ignore things, we work mm -hmm. with them as well as we can. And if it was that easy mm -hmm. just to take care of it overnight, we'd do it. Mm -hmm. But uh, the longer, more complex uh, issues. The other thing I appreciated, yeah, I, about that it gets to what you're talking about. And I became frustrated in this mm -hmm. in this piece to the point where I was grumping at whomever mm -hmm. or some some you know department head. Mm -hmm. I, I think I grumped at the mayor. You know, <laughs> I, mean, I, I said you've got a problem. She's a good sport about those <laughs> I said, things. You've got a problem, and it's next door to me. Yes. And, but what I appreciated was the tolerance for me as a mm -hmm. grumpy citizen, mm -hmm. not a, oh, rolling We the call eyes. concerned citizen, not Thank a grumpy you. citizen. Thank you. Well, yep. I was grumpy. An engaged citizen. <laughs> That's right. That's right. An engaged citizen with passion and intensity. There you go. There, yeah, I, that might be <laughs> accurate. But, you know, I, I think what it, the learning for me there, um, and this was, and it did take time, it took at least six months, at least, if not longer, um, before everything was said and done. Um, and it, it was, as you said, it was stages, you know, you couldn't go into the house, so apparently you did some stakeouts, mm -hmm. and then you couldn't, um, you could only arrest when you saw behaviors, mm -hmm. so then one of our neighbors would see you guys <laughs> pull over somebody every couple of days, you know. Yep. Um, so it took time, but 
the other neat thing is after I'd been grumpy and, and even the beat cop, a good guy, would get grumpy with me mm -hmm. and we'd take a little, <laughs> you know. Um, there was there was a sustained relationship. There was mm -hmm. never a stop calling us ever. Mm -hmm. I, I was repeatedly told just keep calling, you know, keep trying. Yep. You know, apologies sometimes, sometimes not needed. Mm -hmm. um, but also this willingness calling, you know, keep trying. Yep. You know, apologies sometimes, sometimes not needed. Mm -hmm. Um, but also this willingness to share with me. They mm -hmm. want, they, a couple of the cops said, what do you want to know? We'll tell you anything mm -hmm. you want to know. Mm -hmm. And, you know, do you know we can use robots and go mm -hmm. into, and I was like, mm -hmm. no, I don't want to know that. <laughs> yeah. But that was the piece that really made me feel that they saw me as, I don't want to say an equal, but certainly mm -hmm. an equal to solving this sure. problem. Yep. That's a great example. And we try to share as much information as we legally can and, mm -hmm. and and what our policy allows us to do, because information is power and knowledge, and then mm -hmm. at least the citizen knows that, yeah, we are doing a number of things. Mm -hmm. And so we, we try to uh, balance that, but because we want good people like yourself to engage with us and to stick with us. Mm -hmm. I look at it, we're really essentially one big team. We have mm -hmm. one team, one mission. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We want to get rid of the people in the community that don't belong here and committing mm -hmm. crimes that aren't healthy for anybody. So again, it's not a quick fix. There's nothing is, but to, I like your example because you, you stuck with us. It was a sustained mm -hmm. relationship. Mm -hmm. It was uh, consistent, and you, stuck and you with kept us. you yeah. kept calling us, mm -hmm. and rather than give up saying no, they don't care. And the good news is actually, although my neighbors were very reluctant for a long time, mm -hmm. as they started seeing things happening, um, say I wish they would have done this sooner, mm -hmm. and yet they did start showing up. Um, as part of the solution, they started talking amongst themselves, and we were able to isolate mm -hmm. actually who it was before you were, mm -hmm. and then able to give you that information. Yep. I remember the officer saying, we want anything you guys know, yes. anything. The and amount of information over the years, and the, not enough time for all the examples, mm -hmm. where citizens have given us information that's been critical to mm -hmm. a, a major case or a minor case, but a lot of the, the good police work that uh, comes out of Burnsville as a result of cops being proactive, but following up on information mm -hmm. citizens give you. It's a, it's a good, good relationship in place. Mm -hmm.